people to understand that. Um, it's possible to be on the emergency assistance program for a, a five-year period. They kind of recertify you once a year. Um, but five years is, is kind of the stop gap or the maximum time like period that. that you can actually like have get that more, kind of time. Right? I'm glad I didn't mine all year. But, but, but you could, I, I want people to understand that that's applied as a second mortgage. And, and so one of the reasons I'm saying that is because when they look at you, when they're pre-qualifying, it has to also look like someone who has the ability at some point in time to repay that money that they're extending to you. So that's the state mortgage assistance program. And this all came out of the legislation. How many people are familiar with the legislation that came out July 1st in Connecticut? That's where they had the state mortgage assistance program on it. Um, that's where they also had something called mediation. How many people have heard about the fact that you have the right to mediation, okay, if you should receive a summons and complaint? And that's the first step in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is really important, and I, and I have something very positive to say about this. We, in fact, we had the head uh, of the mediation program in our office on Friday when we had a roof assistance team meeting, and she was talking about, you know, statistics and how well it's been going. And let me tell you what the, what the goal of the mediation program was and how we see it working right now. First of all, to be included in mediation, and I would tell everyone, you know, definitely to be included in mediation, you have to be an owner occupant. It's not for investment properties. The house has to be in Connecticut and you're residing in that particular house. Um, and it can be um, a condominium, a single family, or multi-family dwelling. Um, what happens is they send out your summons. It's a summons and complaint. And Attached to the summons and complaint is this mediation sheet that I have in here. Um, and you complete it, and you bring in here too, an appearance form. You bring that down to the courthouse. And what that gives you to is, it, it gives to you the right to have mediation. And you say, okay, Bridget, tell me why I need mediation. Why is mediation good? How does mediation help? Well, mediation is where you, you'll, you'll meet with a court-appointed mediator, and for the um, New Haven Judicial District, there are two mediators, two very good mediators who work in New Haven, and most of the judicial districts have two. I think there's one that only has one mediator. And they will meet with you, and we will <coughs> always send them a letter after you've met with us telling them exactly what we're working on with the lender, who we've been in contact with, so that they have some history there. But the way the legislation is written, when you meet with the mediator, it'll be you, it'll be the mediator. Normally, it'll be a representative, a legal representative of whoever your lender service or chooses. And I'm going to say, number one, it's either going to be Hun Liebert, <coughs> or it's going to be um, mm -hmm. Reiner, Reiner, and, 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 and Vendette, which is the other big firm out there. But normally they'll have one of their lawyers there. And the way the statute reads, if decisions that's available on the other end of the line at your, your, your lender servicer. So if it's countrywide or if it's Saxon Mortgage or whatever <coughs> it is. And how does that help? That means that sometimes we might be having trouble getting a modification done because you know, there are so many files they're working on, but once they're in mediation, they know that they have to have someone of authority who will be by phone. If your mediation session is at 9.30 a.m., they have to be available during that time so that that lawyer <coughs> can get in contact with them. So that means possibly where we might have been stymied, maybe in your mediation session, we're able to negotiate a deal. So mediation can work very much to the good. I'm, I'm thinking of a client I had in Saxon Mortgage, which I shouldn't say these things, but there's some lender servicers I don't like. I don't know if anybody has Saxon Mortgage, but um, even though I don't like them and they give you a hard time, they have modified all the loans that we've been working on. But this particular, we were faxing stuff into Saxon and they were saying, oh, we haven't received it. We haven't received my client faxed it in. You know, oh, we're going to assign it to a negotiator. Two weeks go by, three weeks go by. It's not assigned to a negotiator. 
Uh, finally, you know, even though you're trying to work things out with the lender, as I said, one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. You're working them out, you're trying to work something out in the workout department, they're proceeding with the foreclosure action. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he signed up for mediation, went to mediation, and um, had the same problem with Saxon Mortgage when they went to the first mediation session. They couldn't get anybody on the phone. So the mediator was really good because I, I probably shouldn't even tell this story, but she, she kind of threatened the other lawyer to hold him in contempt of court if, you know, the next time they were at a session that they didn't get uh, someone who was in a position of authority on the phone. Well, they had someone, and to make a long story short, we were able to get the mortgage modified. So I felt like mediation really helped us do our job. So that's just another arm I'm seeing that can be an effective tool in trying to assist you in helping you uh, get the modification or get the time period that you need for the refinance or whatever the option is that you're potentially working on. So that's mediation, and that's something that you should know. That's an important state program. Um, I want people to know, because I think she gave us a statistic that of all the people um, who might have received the summons and complaint um, and had the right, they would qualify to be in mediation, it was something like only 27% had filled in the form to send it back in for mediation. So we want to make sure that people are aware of this. Uh, and the very last thing that I attached to your little packet is a foreclosure information recap. And the reason why I give you this, once again, the beauty of living in Connecticut, guys, Besides the fact that there are high real estate prices and things like that, but there, there are, <coughs> we, okay. <laughs> we are a judicial state. And what does that mean? That in order for them to start the foreclosure proceedings, everything has to go through what? The court system. So I don't want people to panic. I want you to be proactive. I want you to file for mediation. I want you to file your appearance. But I don't want you to panic because a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I got this. I'm foreclosed upon. I mean, there's a process. And I just want people to understand that it's not an overnight process. And that if you effectively get the information that you need and that you're really working on things, that you have a judicial system that once again, I said, where the judge is empathetic to the borrower. So if you're truly working on something and you're saying to the judge, this is what I need. I need 90 more days. I'm in the process of doing this modification. They're going to grant it to you. But you just have to be diligent. You have to be proactive. Um, and working together in this process, it can be one in which you find that you, you were able to negotiate some sort of option that for many cases is going to help someone save their property, stay in their property, but in some cases too, and this is just the realism of the situation, some, not everybody is going to be able to negotiate something to stay in the property because sometimes the income just isn't there to support it. Mm -hmm. um, but at least that you go out and you find out what your options are and we start working on either multiple options or whatever that best option is. So, I'm kind of done. I know it's hot in here, and you guys have been great. Body heat, close <laughs> proximity. Um, and next time, if I ever see you guys again for any kind of class, which I hope I'll see you guys for a money empowerment class, because that's my big thing. I talk about the psychological impact of living in a credit-driven instant gratification society that's all about the accumulation of material stuff. Can you say that? But it, it's very true. I'm just talking about the psychological triggers of why we do what we do. That's what I like to talk about before I even get to the B word, budget. Um, but I, I really do hope to see you guys back for, for some of those classes because, as I, as I said, when we talk about really rebuilding your credit, once we get to the point where we've worked out everything and you're in something that's more affordable for you. Um, the next step will be this, okay? The next step will be by Thursday or Friday, 
if you haven't heard from your counselor, then on Monday, you know what I prefer you guys to do? Email. How many people like emailing? You know why? I, I'm going to... The one thing, I'm going to speak about email, even when you're assigned your counselor, it is so much easier for us to keep in contact with you by email, because what happens with, you know, voicemail, it just fills up really fast, right? But a lot of times we're at computers, and I might be in with a client, and I don't always pick up my phone while I'm talking to a client, but those emails keep coming in, bing, 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 and it's so quick when someone says, Brian, who is my counselor, who, I, who was I assigned to? I haven't heard from them yet. Da -da 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 -da. Here it is, Michael Haynes, and this is his extension. Um, and a lot of your counselors are gonna tell you this too, that it's, it's probably gonna be a lot quicker for you um, just because of our client caseload right now. For, for those of you who can do it, um, to use email as much as you possibly can. But you know, my assignment now, and, and our housing counselor coordinator, and this is why it's so important that you signed in, is we, we look at everyone who signed in, because that's who gets first preference for the next group of appointments, so that we can assign your files out, and we can have your, your, your counselors call you Thursday or Friday, probably setting appointments out for next week. So within this next two week period, we can have all of you seen before our next session. So that's going to be um, the next step. Okay. B. Russell, R U S S E L L, at NHS of New Haven dot org. At what? At NHS, Neighborhood Housing Services, of New Haven dot org. And all of your counselors are uh -huh. at NHS of New Haven dot org. And they'll give you their card. I'd like to thank you for being with me this evening. And, you know, as I said, really wait until next week because we have a lot of files that we're going to be assigning out within the next two days. Um, before you leave, one question? Oh, okay, good. That's fine. B. Russell, Bridget Russell. Thank you. R U S S E L L at NHS of Thank you guys very much. You've been a great crowd. Thank you.